All right, guys, I got a good question today about the uh, difference between a, uh, a pure SDR radio and a hybrid SDR radio. So let's just say you work for uh, a whiz-bang uh, HF uh, receiver company and uh, this new whiz-bang kid right out of college says we don't need to build no stinking filters, we don't need no mixers, we can just put everything in DSP and then we don't need, all we just need is DSP and antenna and that's all we do. So. This is the proposed design. We basically just got an antenna plug comes in, goes into a amplifier and right to the A to D and everything else is digital. Management of course loves it because we don't need any expensive analog hardware anymore. No more filter tuning, no more adjustment. And uh, they all think it's the best thing ever. They'll go ahead and buy the uh, Xilinx chip for about 50 bucks put it all in in firmware, and then charge you, the customer, about $800 and say, it's the latest thing in the 21st century radio. Buy one today. And you see articles in QST and Hamvention, and you think, damn, I gotta get me one of these radios. That's what I gotta do. I gotta go get me one of these radios. So you go out and buy one, looks all fancy and then you go put your antenna up and uh, you tune to your favorite channel moonshine radio at seven megahertz upper sideband and the signal's not it's a little weak you know you threw your wire out the window there you're trying to pick up a good signal so what do you do well like any good amateur you turn up that rf gain and BAM! Spurs all over the place. You got rushed Limbaugh stations coming in. You're like, what the hell's going on? You call your local radio station and tell them you're transmitting all over the band. You need to stop that. FCC comes out. They don't see nothing. Mark you as a, a special retard and uh, never visit you again. <laughs> All right, so what the heck happened? Well, coming in that piece of wire that you threw out the window ain't just the moonshine radio station down here at 90 dB. It's also, we got this bamming Rush Limbaugh station way back here in 77 kilohertz. You know, you live right outside of New York City. So you're hearing this bam signal coming into your antenna full screen. And you also live down the road from West Virginia 5, and he's transmitting on CB radio at about 5,000 watts. So he's also coming down your wire antenna full strength. So your little moonshine radio, it's getting buried by these two big boys here. So what you going to do? You take your radio back and say, this is a piece of shit. I can't even tune in my moonshine radio. The radio gets recalled. Management gets quite pissed because uh, no one likes it. They finally call in some analog folks and say, yeah, you forgot to do one major thing there, college boy. You got to put some bandpass filters before that A to D. And that's what we got right here. Essentially, the idea is you come in with your amplifier. You got a 50 megahertz low pass filter. So basically anything greater than 50 megahertz ain't coming into your radio. And then you start doing these band select filters based on what you want to tune. So you especially want to make one for just the AM band. And you may make one down here for CB. So you listen to your moonshine radio, you'll be switching into that guy. This, sorry, this one here, this 4 to 8. Your 7 megahertz signal goes right on through. Gets digitized by that nice 200 megahertz A to D. And voila! Now you can turn up the RF gain and you don't got to worry about big boy AM and CB guys coming in because they're all getting filtered thanks to this nice little analog filter here. So if you see these DSP radios folks and you ask for a block diagram right away and right before that A to D if you don't see a bank of filters you say have a nice day and you keep walking because what you're going to get is a piece of shit. 
So this is still, I would consider, a pure SDR architecture. Uh, all the demodulation and everything is still done either in firmware or software. We just didn't forget some analog here, as the saying goes. And uh, we got some filters here to uh, channelize the uh, RF signal coming in so that you're not getting bombarded by strong broadcast signals when you're trying to tune some weak little guy down there at 7 megahertz. So this is a much more uh, smarter design and uh, any receiver worth its weight is going to have this. Obviously the more filters you have, uh, the more expensive because you either have to tune them or install them. You got to have an RF switch, you know. These are all things management don't like to see because it all costs money and then they don't make their big bonus. But as an engineer, these are something that you need to have in front of your receiver so that you get the best optimal uh, performance. So I hope that explains uh, the idea. But um, you see this other A to D, it works at 40 megahertz clock and it has a better 80 dB range as opposed to the other one that only had a 60 dB range. Well, does that mean that we can only see 0 to 20 megahertz with this guy? Not really. You can still use it, you just got to put some mixers in front of that bad boy. So here we still got our antenna coming in, you got your low noise amplifier. Still need to have your switch banks of filters based on what you want to tune. But now we'll put a mixer here and we'll tune the frequency that we want to receive up to this 10.7 megahertz and that's what we'll digitize with this 40 megahertz uh, A to D. And it's probably not a good idea to have a bandpass selection here even at the IF frequency whether you want to do wide or narrow or even super narrow. Now most of the filtering these days can be done with an A to D but you still can gain a lot by doing bandpass filters in the analog, especially when you're trying to deal with neighboring strong signals. So I would call this a hybrid SDR radio. So hopefully that explains uh, the difference between a pure SDR where it's essentially the A to D right out to the antenna and this would be a hybrid SDR where we're kind of using some of the old analog here and then all the final filtering, demodulation, signal processing, noise reduction, etc, etc is all done back here in the DSP. Alright, well hopefully that explains you guys the difference between what's called a hybrid SDR and a true SGR. My personal preference, I think the more you get the best of the old world and the new, the better you're gonna be. Now I will say, just because you got some old radios out there, it don't mean you can just throw them away. A lot of these radios, they have about two IF stages in them. They either got a 10.7 stage, and they also have a 455 kilohertz stage. And these are perfect areas where if you get in the radio, you can tap that and send that to your SDR, your dongle, whatever. Or even tap it up here and send that to the uh, some SDR radio. And now, you get the benefit of all the amplification and filtering that's in that old radio. Just because it was done by some old engineers don't mean it ain't going to be good. Let me tell you, some of the best designs I've ever seen were in old radios. So this is certainly a way that you can get SDR uh, into an old radio and take advantage of all the front end filtering and amplification that's in that guy. Back here they may have some old analog demodulation circuits, but once you tap that IF into an, RC, an SDR receiver, now the software can do all the processing for you with the latest modes and everything else. So. Here's one idea, and I've done this many times, where you just take an old radio, you find where the IF uh, stages are in the receiver, uh, and you just tap a coax in there. You might want to put some kind of voltage follower, some kind of buffer to isolate it from the radio. 
and then you just let that uh, signal go into the SDR, get digitized, and voila! You got an old radio now, ready for the 21st century. Well folks, thanks for watching, and as usual, I hope you learned something.